from heaven and then we survive we are here for you we are here for you your fire fall down happy new year i'm going to read from psalm 100 this morning are you doing well all right it says shout joyfully to the lord all the earth serve the lord with gladness 
come before him with joyful singing know that the Lord himself is God it is he who has made us and we not ourselves for we are his people and the sheep of his pasture can we give him a shout this morning it says serve the Lord with gladness how many of you come into the house of God with gladness this morning with joy how many of you know one of the great the greatest way for us to serve him is actually to worship him is to minister to him the Bible says that we are a royal priesthood and so our first ministry is to minister to God amen and the way we do that is to enter his gates with Thanksgiving we're in a new year none of us are good enough to screw it up this early it's still a good year enter his gates with Thanksgiving and his courts with praise give thanks to him bless his name for the Lord is good his loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations how many of you know as God's been faithful you uh, faithful to you in 2017 and the years before he's faithful to you this year he's faithful to you in the days that are ahead the unknown amen you know he deserves our praise he's worthy of our worship he's worthy of our praise can you just give him thanks right now with your own words from your own lips just give him thanks right now start thanking him for the things of this year start thanking him for the things that are coming God we thank you for 2018 we thank you God that you turn all things for the good for those who love you God and Lord there's a great reversal for 2018 it's a year of restoration it's a year of redemption it's a year of health in wholeness and prosperity it's a year of intimacy with you god it's a year of breakthrough and breakouts with you god and so lord we just declare to you and we give you thanks in advance in faith with hope in our love god jesus we give you all of our praise we give you all of our worship god you are worthy we join with all of heaven god all of angels all the elders around the throne and we declare worthy is the lamb worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive glory and honor and power in jesus name I believe. 
and do what you want to do. Come in your strength, come in your power, come in your glory with open hearts, with hungry hearts, with open minds, and hungry hearts to do what you want to do. Let our faith, let our hope arise right now. The God of miracles, the God who manifests His presence. God, we receive you. We say, come, Lord. you want to do 
So come and do what you want to do, Lord. Do what you want to do, Lord. Do what you want to do. Yeah. Make room for you to move. Make room for you to speak.
the storm surrounding me let it break at your name still it calls me to still the rage in me to still every way at your name Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you silence fear Jesus you make the darkness tremble you make the darkness tremble Jesus you silence fear you silence fear oh. oh yes you silence every other voice yeah. sing breathe and breathe call these bones to live call these lungs to sing once again bones to live, call these lungs to see once again, and I will praise Jesus, Jesus, you made the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus, you silence can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome your name and your name is alive but the shadows can't deny and your name the Lord just said that 2018 is the year where we reestablish our view of God rightly that everything in 2017 that got a little bit bigger than him every problem that became a little bit bigger than God then this is the year that we switch and we decide big God small devil big God small devil and so we just declare over our year that we rightly see that God is bigger than anything else that he is the powerful almighty one that sits on the throne and at the cross he sent ripples through generations of power. He sent ripples of power through generations. And so we rightly see you, God. Let's just respond to that. Let's just declare this again. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. How many of you know there's power in the name of Jesus? There is healing, Jesus. deliverance, freedom. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Jesus, Jesus.
Jesus, Jesus, you made the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence every fear. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Good morning. We're going to continue worshiping the Lord through communion this morning. And if you're visiting here this morning, you're welcome to take it with us. The only thing we ask is that you know that you're following Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I would just ask you guys to come out of your seat and uh, take the elements back to your seat, and then we'll take it together as a group. I'd like to read from John chapter 15 as we, get, as we take this together. John chapter 15, verses 12 through 15. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. I want to focus on, chap on verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. And there's a succession there. Jesus loved us first. God loved us first. And I feel like as we take communion together for the first time in 2018, I just want to come back to this foundation of love. This foundation of God loved us. And the things we do in life and ministry and, you know, the things we do for the Lord, our motivation has to be that foundation of love. This foundation of God loved us incredible, this, with this incredible love that motivates us to go out and, and change the world. When we see what, what's on Jesus' heart, this love he had for us and this love that we give back to him, we want to change the world because that's what's on his heart, not because it makes us look good or anything like that. So our motivation has to be love. When Jesus took the bread, he broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. And I just wanna say thank you God, thank you Father that you gave your son on the cross for us. Thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to go to the cross for us, that you went, that you saved us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you were willing to reach into the darkest places and bring us out. Let's take this bread together. In the same way, Jesus took the cup and he said, this is my blood which is shed for you. I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for freeing us. <clears throat> thank you for loving us with this great love, God. And that we could give that back to you somehow. Let's take this together. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You 
make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Let's all stand together. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you that you are in this place right now. That your word says where two or three are gathered, that you are in the midst of us, God. Lord, we thank you that you are faithful to your promises. Lord, we thank you that your name is Emmanuel, God, with us. Lord, we thank you for the name Jesus. That is for us. And if you are for us, who can be against us? To that one we lift up, God. And we just give you a praise this morning. We give you worship this morning, God. We say you're worthy. You're worthy, Jesus. The name of Jesus, he's worthy, amen. He's worthy. This morning, just give him a clap offering. Just give him a clap offering this morning. Turn my microphone up. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. You know, I just want to stay in this place right now. I'm going to ask Vicky to come up. This isn't planned. This is, but I want Brian and Kelly and Ray. I want us to pray for Vicky and uh, Renaissance Porterville this morning. I want us to. They're they're launching into weekly services, and I believe something's going to happen even tonight as they gather. That's something unprecedented is going to take place as, uh, as, as they step out in faith and go week to week going after the presence of God that the prophetic promises over Porterville would come to fruition that there would be a breaking point in the spirit and so everyone stretch your hands out towards her and just start, just start blessing her just start blessing the team in Porterville right now.
God, we just thank you for open heavens over Porterville, God. Open heavens over Porterville, that you are doing a mighty work there, God. We thank you for Vicki and her team, Lord. Yes. Holy Spirit, that you will fill them in a mighty new way, Lord. And Lord, we just say clear the path. Clear the path even now. Anything that's been in the way, Lord God, we just say for it to just come down even now. And Lord, all those, Father, who have no place, Lord God, that they're going to find Renaissance Porterville. They're going to find restoration and healing, Lord God, at Renaissance Porterville, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, for Vicki and for her team, Lord God. We thank you for all that you've done, and we thank you for all you're going to do. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you for Vicki and her ministry up there, Lord. And we ask that you, your Holy Spirit just begin to fall on that place right now in preparation, Lord. That it begin to just anoint that facility, Lord spirit would be strong and the people would come and this would be a year of growth for their Lord. This, she's going to see miracles happen this year, Lord. We just thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. And more power to her, Lord. Just bless her with the power of your Holy Spirit. Fall upon her. Fill her. Just praise you, Jesus. Thank you. I just see him. Um like a, an, uh, an, it's at night and I see an airplane landing where, and they're all of it's like lit up. So it's like this lit up on both sides, like so the plane knows where to land. And I, I just feel like the Lord is saying that that is like, don't worry about anything, that literally he is gonna guide your path. You're gonna see that path lit and you're just gonna follow the path. It's don't overthink it, just follow, follow the path that he's just laying right in front of you. And so Lord, I just pray that you would open our eyes and our ears to hear and see what you are saying to her, God, that God, you direct every single step, God, every path, God, let her just follow. No matter what happens, she just follows that path, God. I pray that you would open the up, God, for her to see new revelations, God. I pray, God, as she has to speak every week, God, that you would just give her downloads, God, downloads from heaven on what you want her to say. And so I just thank you. Don't be worried. <laughs> so Vicki, we, we bless you as a church family. We bless you and what God's put on you, that prophetic spirit. I, we bless that. And we just command the wings of the spirit in you to spread wide. In Jesus' name, that you would fly again, that you would fly, that you would soar once again, that there would be a company of people in Porterville that would soar with you in the heavenly places to manifest the things of the kingdom from the unseen into the seen so get ready because this is a year of miracles says god get ready even tonight i declare that there will be a miraculous breakout of holy invasion from heaven and so god we pray even as she speaks lord that you would fill her mouth with your words god that revelation and manna from heaven would be released god and so, Lord, we declare, God, that the people will come, that the ones in the caves and hurting and the pain, those who've connected, those who said we're done with church, God, those in the unchurched world, God, that love you, we call you for We call the revivalists. We call the reformers into this community right now. And so, God, we thank you. And we just be confidence to you, Vicky, like never before. A confidence that you would walk in the spirit by the spirit and so god we just say freedom over you vicky freedom over you freedom 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 and we bless your team we bless the team that god assembled in jesus name and so lord we just say let your presence come tonight in an unusual way and lord we say let your presence be the main attraction let your presence be that magnetic force that people are attracted to. And so we just pray for a fresh feeling over you, Vicky, right now. Of power right now. Of the Holy Spirit. Just a fresh fire and burning. That people in Porterville would see you burn again. Just more, Lord. More, Lord. Fire, God! Whoa! Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. Jesus. 
God is good. Amen. How many of you believe God is good? Thank you, Lord. Well, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone who's online with us. We'd rather have you here, but if you couldn't be here, we'd rather have you online. We love you. But before we get too comfortable, why don't we go ahead and take a few moments and and just greet one another, wish one another a happy new year, give one another a happy new year blessing. And those of you online, you could go ahead and greet one another, just use the chat and just say hi to one another. Let us know you're on with us. Say hello.
It's so good to see everybody. Let's go ahead and uh, greet our way back to our seats. And if we're sitting on the uh, ends, if we could come to the center, that would be great. Can we give the worship team a big God bless you? Amen. Amen. Are you having a good new year so far? Yes? So far. Yeah, we're seven days in. Like I said, none of us are that good to mess it up. Or maybe you are. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. Are you glad to be here? Let's see here. I'm looking around the room, and there uh, are there any first-time guests, if I'm missing anybody? I don't think there are. If there is, go ahead and just raise your hand. We have a guest with us. Can we give him a God bless you? Give her a God bless you. And uh, I want to welcome you. You can fill out a Connect card and just turn that in. We'd love to just stay in touch with you, keep you posted and updated as to what's going on here. And we do have a lot that is going on. And so welcome to the Renaissance. There's always a lot going on. And, and so that's a good thing, isn't it? And it's better than being bored. That's right. I'm not, it's not time for me to preach yet, Lee. So don't, don't, don't get me going. But, uh, but we, again, we want to uh, welcome those who are watching online. Can everyone just turn around and just give a wave? God bless you. And I don't know if you can see them, but um, uh, you just got a wave from all of us. So uh, hope you're doing well. Happy New Year to you. If you're looking for a church, if you're a part of a church and you're looking for a church, then just make Renaissance your church. We so believe in what God's doing here, and, uh, and I don't know, I'm just, I'm excited about the season we're coming into, and that's all I need to say about that, but um, invite your friends, invite your family, invite your neighbor. How many of you believe in what God's doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I believe it. That's why I keep showing up. You know, but um, let's, let's, you know, let's reach out to the community, reach out to those. And, you know, there's a million of those out there, brothers and sisters, they call them the de-churched, de-churched. And, you know, they, and the thing is, they've been so wounded, you know, they have this painful theology, you know, and, and so, but they need to reconnect, amen? And you're the reconnecting agent, so... Go out and grab them, bring them in, and let's bring them into family. Well, before we get too uh, comfortable, why don't we go ahead and, too comfortable, you guys look already all chilled and ready. Um, we're going to go ahead and continue worshiping the Lord through our tithes and our offering. And so um, I, don't need to, I don't need to pound the pavement, but I do believe in giving just some teachings biblically. So if you need envelopes, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll get you envelopes. If you're giving through push pay, you could give through that way as well. Those of you who are watching online, if you'd like to participate with us, worshiping the Lord through giving, you could hit that give button right underneath the screen um, that you're watching and uh, participate with us that way. You know, God is, you know, he's given Renaissance a vision. You know, he's given us a mission. Amen. Amen. We're a family with a mission. Right? We're just not a family. We're, you know, there's, there's a mission in the kingdom but the mission that God, the vehicle that God uses to complete what's on his heart is through family. How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. And so as we're giving this year, you know, let's, let's give into where this month we're, we're going to be talking about each week, just um, family with the vision. We're going to be talking about the vision that God has for Renaissance and how we're going to be building together. And we're doing that by building strong families. Amen. We're doing that by transforming community this year. You know, I, I spoke about it last week. You know, the two focuses we're going to have is we're going to continue to build family. And we're going to focus now from building family as we're continuing to do that and building with that pillar, the pillar of transforming community. Because everything has to translate. Amen? And so as we're doing that, how many of you know that we need resources? to touch the community, to, to do things. Amen? You know, but in that, you know, we want to be a blessing to our city. We want to be a blessing to one another. And, and I could say this, you know, just uh, we had a board meeting just a few weeks ago and um, looked at all the numbers and all these things. And, you know, I want to first and foremost, we want to thank you just for continuing to be givers. You know, look at, look at one another. 
and just say, bless you. You know, you guys, you guys are incredible givers, you know, and I'm, I'm so proud of that about Renaissance, you know, and, and so let's continue that, amen? You know, God is faithful to what he says, and I believe that as we're continuing to be faithful, you know, so many of you could have just given up, but you didn't, you know, and you're continuing to obey the word of God, and you're going to see God's faithfulness this year. I so believe that. This is not just cliche that I'm talking but I, I truly believe that with the conviction of my heart. And so you, many of you are going to be surprised. Amen? And so let's give knowing that God has something tremendous for us. Let's give knowing that God has a vision for this family to build strong families and to transform our community. And we are going to be doing some stuff for our community this year. Amen? Amen. And so let's all stand together. And so again, I just want to read one scripture before we declare this. I want you to apply your faith, 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 faith. There's faith. It's got to be faith in some language, okay? Faith, okay? It's 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 seed and faith together. Faith, all right. <laughs> so, so I want you to apply your faith to this seed for the vision okay this is a vision seed that you're giving this morning amen apply your faith to it i just want to read this he who is faithful in very little thing is faithful also in much and he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much if therefore you've not been faithful in the use of unrighteous mammon who will entrust you the true riches to you and we're after the true riches amen and if you've not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? It's God's faithfulness partnered with our stewardship. And so our giving this morning is our stewardship. Amen? Amen. And we're partnering with God in our giving this morning. And so let's declare this knowing that. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessings and increases. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God by generously giving into my church family to make Jesus famous. So, Lord, I pray that even as we give together on this first Sunday in 2018, this vision seed, Lord, I pray that you would release an anointing that would create wealth. Lord, every household, every person, Lord, that you would release that spirit of wisdom to transform communities, to disciple nations, God. Lord, that through our giving, that we would co-partner with heaven to see your purposes come to pass. And I pray that multiplied blessing and that promise, God, that you said that if we're faithful with just little things, Lord, that we will be faithful with much. And Lord, that if we were faithful with the unrighteous things, God, that you would give to us true riches. So I pray, God, that every person here would step into true riches from your glory and your presence this year. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen, amen. You may be seated. Let's receive the offering. Let's invite Pastor Kelly up as she gives us the announcement. Good morning, good morning. Happy New Year. Uh, we're going to start with our weekly gatherings. We have our youth gathering every Wednesday in Suite 106. <laughs> 7 p.m. with the lawyers. Lawyers. If you know any youth, let's bring them out. Let's see them. Come on. How you know? They're the next generation. They're going to raise up, you know. They're going to continue what we're doing. Uh, young adults with Audrey and Eunice. <laughs> every Wednesday, 7 p.m., in the foyer how do you know how many of you know that everything we do is um, foundational of prayer yeah. Yeah. our hop every Friday we had an amazing first um, our hop this past Friday I think we had like 23 25 people how do you know that is good and healings, and healings. 
Let's continue. Let's all be there. Let's pray, pray together. Amen. Men's meeting. First men's meeting. January 20th of this year. I want to I know that you're all going to be there. 8.30 a.m. at Jay's place. Please contact Ray and Pastor Brian for any information. Men, come on. Now, women's meeting. Wow, men, they got you beat on that one. Come on. January 27th, we will be meeting at Jay's place as well. Jay's just seems to be the place to be. Come on, it's good food. 10 a.m. to 12, for the women's, there is a sign-up sheet. And we, you know, women, we're going we're gonna to be doing some devotional time. We're going to be doing some time of praying for one another. So I want to see you there. I think it's going to be good. Let's start off the year right. Wren Porterville weekly service launch tonight with Vicki. So excited about that. 6 p.m. tonight. Connect groups, we are on a break. We will resume. When are we resuming? February 6th. <laughs> I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for a break, but I'm really excited about our connect groups because that's when we get together. We pray for one another. We get to know one another. It's so important, church. We only, if we're only here on Sundays, I don't know you. You don't know me. We need to get together. <laughs> Come on. If we, if we got to say we're family, you got to get together. Yeah. Amen? So I know I'm going to see all your names up on that con- on that that list out there, right? Right. You're not going to let me down, right? (laughs) All right, thank you. With that, we have um, Jamie Galloway coming February 16th through the 18th. He is a prophetic voice who imparts a lifestyle of the supernatural. How many of you need the supernatural in our lives? All of you should have your hands up. (laughs) Come on. How many of us are going to be there? I am. All right, I wish I had a picture of all your hands, but it's okay. It's all right. You're all going to be there because I trust all of you. Um, With that, we're going to welcome back up Pastor Tony Kim. Can we give him a hand? Welcome him up. You are too kind. All right. Do you love me enough to give me an hour? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> give me all the sending ovation I want, but <laughs> when you give me time, that's called real love. All right. Well, we're having fun, aren't we? Church is supposed to be fun. And so we're always having fun together. Well, this morning I want to talk about uh, just the family vision. You know, I just want to talk and and just share what I believe God has for us uh, this year. And um, we're going we're gonna to really focus on one verse and then kind of break out from there. And since this is a prophetic community, you should just know exactly what I'm going to talk about and what verse. So just open up your Bibles to where you feel. And the whole Bible is prophetic anyway, so just, just open it up and read it. It's all good. Um, but uh, just one more announcement before we jump into the word here. Uh, we're resuming Roar Academy tomorrow night. And so um, for those of you who are part of it, I know you forgot about it over the last couple of weeks. But uh, catch up on all your reading and uh, all your assignments. And uh, we're going to get back and Pastor Ken's going to lead us off by teaching. And then I'm going to uh, take that second half and uh, we're, we're, we're all just going to go for it. Amen. And so i uh, remind you of that. All right, well, if you have your Bibles, which you do, because you all have phones, uh, open up your Bible to Proverbs 29, 18. Proverbs 29, 18. How many of you love the book of Proverbs? I will challenge you, read one proverb a day. You will read the book of Proverbs 12 times in a year. Just one, one, one chapter a day, and that's all you need. If you read six chapters of Psalms and one chapter of Proverbs each day, you'll get through the Psalms every month and the Proverbs every month. So welcome to one of my reading plans. And, and so I just want to encourage you, you know, as Renaissance, continue to dive deep in the Word. Dive deep in the Word. 
And so Proverbs 29, 18, we know this well. Many of us have memorized it, but just may, maybe not know the specific address. And it says this, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained, or some, another version says the people perish, but happy is he who keeps the law. It's one of the most miscontextualized scriptures when it comes to teachings to the body of Christ, in my opinion, at least one of the verses. And so we're going to unpack this, and then we're going we're gonna to talk about the vision that God has given to Renaissance to us this year as a church family. So let's pray. Lord, help these people. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, help us all. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I pray that you would give to us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God, that we would know you more. Lord, give us listening and he hearing ears this morning. Help us to hear what the Spirit's saying to the church to us this morning. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just put a fresh perspective in your word. Lord, we thank you that your word is alive and active. And so, God, we give you permission for that living and active word to do a work in us this morning. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, Happy New Year. Amen. It's a great year. Amen. The, 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 the word, uh, you know, when, when you think about 2018, and I want you to interact with me. Okay, and those of you who are online, just shout loud enough where I could hear you. Okay, what is the one word or phrase that God has been talking to you about for 2018? Flourish. Flourish. Dream. All right. What? Redirection. Favor. Health. Territory. What? New. What else? Intentional. Freedom. Remember this six months from now. <laughs> Remember this six months from now. Remember the first time you heard God's voice. Remember the time when he first called you by name. See, the book of Proverbs, let me just preface it before we jump in. Solomon is the writer, amen? And he writes the book of Proverbs to his children who are heirs to his throne. He writes this book to impart to the next generation kings. And, and he, he writes this thing, it's a book of wisdom. And he talks about how wisdom shouts in the streets, that the that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, how we're to get understanding, right? And then he goes into just the direction and he, and he exhorts them on how to live and what this expression of wisdom looks like through our lives. And so from that place, you know, and if you read the book, I mean, it is just, there's so much meat in that thing. It talks you how to relate to one another. It talks you, you know, it warns you of who to look after, you know, look out for and to how to have discernment and, and all these things. It's the book of Proverbs. And I believe one of the greatest gifts that we need to get today is wisdom. We need to ask for wisdom. You know, I was with the company, you know, I was with uh, YWAM this, uh, this past week in Catalina Island. And I was suffering on the island. You know, just the, 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 the view and just the sunset and the sunrise. And, and, and I mean, it was just like the low was 60 degrees all week. And, you know, it was so, you know, just the pain of missions. You know, just, just entered my body. I was in anguish. You know, so I was taking photo after photo and posting it and people being jealous and envious and, you know, all these things, right? And so, you know, so I was there and we were talking, I was talking about leadership development and leadership and reformation and all these things. And, and it's, it dawned on me, you know, it says that there's, there'll, no, there'll be no one like Solomon, no one wiser than Solomon before or after him. But then I realized this, that was within the old covenant. How much more in the new covenant? Because the Spirit of God may have been on Solomon, but the Spirit is in us. 
So we're living in a new era. We're a people that was not yet created from that time. Amen. Psalm 102 verse 18. And so it's from that place where Solomon writes this and he's saying, sons, this is the way. And then he goes to Proverbs 29, 18. He didn't write Proverbs 29, 18, by the way. Okay. There were no chapters or no verses back then. And then you get to this phrase where there's no vision. People are unrestrained, but happy is he who keeps the law. Without vision, people perish. You know why the world is perishing? You know why the world, and when it, when it says perish, it means to run wild, to live loosely, to live out of alignment with the purposes of God. That when the younger son in Luke 15, when, when, when he ran off with all of his inheritance, and it says that he blew, and he, and he blew all of his wealth on loose living, that's the same word as cast off restraint. It's the same word as perish. Why do people perish? Why do people, those who even love Jesus, why are there friends of mine that went to Bible college together who were on fire for Jesus now consider themselves atheists? Bible scholars, so to speak. Brilliant thinkers. Went to the same systematic theology course as I did, the same Gospel of John. Maybe not the same because I missed half of my classes a lot of times. <laughs> Pastor Ken would have sat me down and actually said, you know what, Tony? You have way too much potential to be missing class. <laughs> I, was one of those cl I was one of those students. I'm not proud of it. I'm just kind of letting you in. I mean, I know that shocks all of you because I, I seem like such a man of discipline. And, you know, <laughs> my wife laughs the loudest. The second person that laughs the loudest is Elder Ray. And so... <laughs> Thanks, leadership, for that affirmation. We love you. <laughs> I love you too. Back to the word. <laughs> See, wh why are they? Why are they living apart from the purposes of God? Why are they? Why are they living this un, you know unrestrained, this loose lifestyle? It's because they have no vision. But then, in the secular world that we know, we talk about vision as far as forecasting of the future what's ahead of us what are we going to be doing this next year 2018 i even said it god's given us a vision for 2018 but what does that really mean do you have vision for your life it's i'll tell you one thing if there's a huge chasm between a person with the vision versus a person with the vision from god it's two worlds apart i know many people with great vision I know a few people with the vision from God. Who are you? Are you, are you a person with the vision within yourself, forecasting your own future, or are you a person that received a vision from God? And as Christ followers, the centrality of our vision has to have into focus Jesus. It's not what I want, not about my success. It's not about my wealth, my well-being. There's nothing wrong with those things. But if my is a centrality, you just made yourself God. And then we wonder why we don't succeed. What's, what's the key to success? It's all through all scripture. There's no secret to success. Obedience. Deuteronomy 28, if you obey my word, guess what? You're going to prosper, what? The Bible says, in everything. How do you become successful? The Bible also says, if you listen to my prophets, you will be successful. Right? That's what 2 Chronicles says. See, vision... It's not just man-made that Solomon is talking about. That, that when there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. But happy is he who keeps the law. Yeah. See, how do you come into this place of, see that, say, that word happy, say happy. happy. Now put a smile on your face and at least say it happy. 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 
See, you know your facial expressions matter, right? It's like, happy versus happy, right? And so we need to be happy people, right? You know, you know God's given us happiness. How many of you know that? God's purpose for our life is to be happy. I used to say, you know what, God, you know, you don't need to be happy, you just need to be joyful. Actually, happiness and joyful are all intertwined together and you can't separate the two. It sounded good from a religious system, but then I read the Bible and I realized I was wrong. Right? Because why? If we understand the true ens- essence of happy, you know what happy means? It means to be blessed. That word, blessed are those, blessed are those. That Greek word means happy are those. That word blessed, it actually is derived from a, from a term that they would deem on the Greek gods, that the gods are blessed. In other words, they're jovial. They're full of life. They're happy. They have the resource. They have, they're not living in lack. They're happy. So they would say that the Greek gods, Zeus is blessed. That's what they would say. Hermes is blessed. Artemis, she's blessed. And Jesus uses and derives that statement and says, blessed are you. And the very things that the world deems as curses, God actually blesses. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Because in those days, if you are hungry and thirsty, you were cursed by God. Blessed are the poor. If you are poor, it's because God cursed you. Because you did something wrong. And Jesus takes all of this, and he takes it from a kingdom perspective. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. See? You see, in this, where there's no vision, people perish, but happy is he who keeps the law. Where did the law come from? It came from God's mouth. Moses, take two tablets, and what I say, write it on the tablets and take it down. When did we ever make the law religious? If it came from the voice and the mouth of God? The religious spirit did. The law is not religious. The law gives freedom. The law gives liberation. The law was established because God knew that if we obeyed the Ten Commandments, that we would be blessed. God gives laws to release blessing. Religiosity releases laws to control and put you in bondage. See, happy is he who keeps the law. In other words, obedience. So what does, how do we, what does this mean? We know that there's people unrestrained out there living this out. We know there's people, even in those over the number of years that come to Renaissance, who, who were set on fire and all of a sudden they're out there. Why is that? Why is it that sometimes, now let's personalize it. That we could be on fire one day with God in one season. In the next season, it just, we just seem to have trouble and we seem to walk away from the one that we were so in love with the season before. The one, one season we're saying, I'll do anything for you, God. And then the next season, we're like, where are you, God? One season, it's like, I love you, Jesus. The next season is, God, I hate you. I mean, this is real, isn't it? It's a journey. But see, I want to tell you this morning, one of the keys of staying in alignment with God, and I believe alignment is a word for this year. We need to stay in alignment. And if you're out of alignment, there's a realignment for you. And just because you haven't been aligned, you know what, if you feel like I'm just kind of snapping back in place, right? That's what the word alignment means. 
it's a, it's a medical terminology when the Apostle Paul uses the word alignment. Kenartizo, which means to snap a bone back in its place when it was out of place. God is about to snap some of you back in place into the body and many others out there. See, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. And I want to propose to you, the reason why we, we come out of alignment is because we lack vision. We have no vision. I think one of the biggest challenges that I went through over the last couple years is this. Let me say this. One of, the, one of the prophetic words that I received in my life was this. It was, you have great capacity in your mind, in your spirit, and in your skill set to build empires around the world, but your challenge is to actually depend on God and not your own strength. They said, and it was a warning word, and he said, be careful that you don't build empires in a credit to God when God had nothing to do with it. You think that put the fear of God in me? In the last couple of years, you could ask my wife, you could ask Eliana, that was one of the biggest challenges I went through. I didn't like my wife very much back then. <laughs> I loved her to death, but I don't know if I liked her very much. I would say, hey, I have this idea, and I draw this thing out, paint this beautiful apostolic map and picture. I'd be unfolding this thing, it would just, and she'd go, sounds like a good idea from you. I walk away. I'll go talk to somebody that appreciates me. I'll go talk to someone that's not as spiritual. That walks in the flesh just as much as I do. <laughs> but see, when, when I was presenting vision to my wife, it wasn't vision at all. Maybe elements of it were God, but maybe majority wasn't. Until this past year, I said, I'm done. Stick a fork in me, I finito. Yeah, I'm finished. And my wife said, you need to hear God. What's God saying? She says, stop reading books, stop looking for strategy. You need to hear God. See, I'm, I'm allowing my wife to preach through me, so if you don't like this, get mad at Jessica. <laughs> Pastor Jessica says, you need to hear God. <laughs> you don't need strategy. You don't need another book. You need to hear the voice of God. See, where there's no vision, from a humanistic perspective, there's tons of vision. From a spiritual perspective, there's very few with vision. What does vision mean? If we're gonna contextualize and apply this verse rightly to our life, we have to actually understand the first phrase of the verse, where there's no vision. Where there's no vision, people perish. Vision, that word in the Hebrew, is chazon. Okay, look at your neighbor and go chazon without spitting on him. Chazon, right? Chazon. It's like, it's like hakalugi. Chazon, right? Some of you recovering from colds and stuff like that. You guys are graced with extra right now. See? What that means is this, it's not a forecast of the future. It, 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 that word literally means the voice of God. It means the oracles of God. It means revelation. Without the voice of God, without the revelation, without the oracles of God, the people perish. The people are without, they live unrestrained. And so you see people running out, doing everything they're doing. You know why? It's because they haven't heard the word of the Lord. They haven't heard his voice. Have you heard his voice for this year? We're excited 
We're excited for 2018, right? But have you heard his voice? Because it's his word that's going to sustain us, not our excitement. You know, we could step in with joy and excitement. And you know what? I love that. Let's do that. But how many of you know it's his word that's going to sustain us through the year? Where we stay aligned. What happens if we as Renaissance, we don't become aligned and then misaligned and then realigned and then readjusted? What if we just stay in alignment no matter what happens? Because God spoke and that's our anchor. That the word of God. How many of you know this is vision? The word of God is vision. And we at Renaissance, we are a people of the word. It cracks me up when people say, oh, you know, that Renaissance, they know how to worship, but they know nothing about the word. Well, let's talk Greek. Let's talk Hebrew. Come talk to Pastor Ken. I'll stick Pastor Ken on you. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but we're a people of his word. This is true vision. This is the oracle of God. This is not just the written word. This logos is a living word. It's active. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. Are you in the word? See, when I see people, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't take rocket science to know how people are doing spiritually. You don't need to talk to them to know how they're doing spiritually. Just watch them. Just watch them. Well, how's so-and-so doing? I don't know, but just watch them for a little bit. It's really simple. How we treat one another. Right? How they treat themselves. It just shows that the relationship with God is weak in that moment. I'm not saying it's not going to be strong tomorrow, but I'm just saying in that moment, they're disconnected from God. So how do we stay aligned with God? We live like Jesus. I only do what I see the Father doing. That is a constant communication, which means there's constant relationship. You know, God's not just a gumball machine that whenever you need him, you throw a quarter in him and then a gumball pops out. You know, we treat him that way. You know, and then when everything goes well, we walk away. You know, he's not a genie in a lamp. He's our God. He's our Lord and Savior. Amen? Vision. So let me just translate this. Where there's no hearing the voice of God, where there's no revelation, where there's no oracle of God, the people live the way they want to live into destruction. Wow, that's good. I know that's the Tony Kim translation, but I'm just paraphrasing it for you. But the one who obeys his word, the one who obeys his voice, to that one, he will be blessed beyond all measure. Proverbs 29, 18. How many of you want to be blessed? We are blessed, but there's more coming, isn't there? Come on. We need to hear the voice of God. Now let me tell you what God said about Renaissance this year. Well, when, when we established this whole thing, Renaissance, and I know it doesn't look much, but we're like an iceberg. 90% of us are still, it's still underneath the waters. No one can see it, but we have, we have pillars and piers that go down 20 stories. And now we're going to build up. And we're going to build out. But he said this. He said, build strong families. It's about community and it's about nations. Build strong families. How many of you know when families restored, communities restored? Come on. Yeah. By research from social psychologists, they've proven by statistic that every social ill is due to fatherlessness. That's why I love what Liron does doing. I don't know if it's public, but can I say it? It's awesome. You know, Liron has a heart to go into foster parenting. 
Come on, it's the restoration of family. Isn't that amazing? You know, when we get older, maybe, you know, we've, uh, you know, we've talked about it before we were even married, about adoption, adopting kids. You know, it's about family. Every social ill has to do with father, fatherlessness. So what happens when the families in the ecclesia and God's family, we all become restored yeah. within the nucleus of our family, but then also our spiritual family? What happens then? Watch out, world. Watch out, world. Did you know to, we could reform the foster care adoption system in the U.S. in one year? I already have a strategy for it. You know what it is? Every church in America adopts one child, you obliterate the whole foster care system in America. I'm not saying every family, I'm saying every church in America. Just a couple of years ago, the guesstimate was about, I think, 160 something thousand foster uh, kids in the system. I'll tell you, there's a lot more churches than that. Right? But we're going to build strong family. Look at one another. We're going to learn to love each other well. And as we love each other well, we're going to capture the attention of Bakersfield. And because of love, we're going to transform the city. I'm not talking about outside. I'm talking about Bakersfield, Porterville, Taft, whatever city is represented in Renaissance, we're going to transform. And see, build, say, build strong families. And we do that by gathering and growing and giving and going. Those are our four pillars. We haven't changed that. So if we're going to build strong families, we need to know what family looks like, don't we? It's, you know, the question always is, what is, okay, what is family? What is family? You know, family one is this, family is covenant. That's what family is. Family is covenant. It's not contractual. It's not bound by MOU, memorandum of understanding. It's covenant. It's by the blood, not ink. And so what, what does family look like in covenant? It's all about giving. Covenant is based upon what I give to you, not what I could receive from you. And so what if every single one of us lived as givers? And by the way, in everything God created is created to give. As a primary posture. And from the principle of reciprocity, you receive back. Giving. Can you give of yourself? your time, your talent, your treasures. See, some people are really good at giving treasures, but they're not good at giving time or their talent. Listen, we don't want just your money. God doesn't want just your money. He wants your heart. And within the heart is found time, talent, and treasure, and a little bit of spit. <laughs> See, how can you give to Renaissance family this year? How can we give to one another? Now how, you know, are we giving our resources? Are we giving our time? How are we using the gifts and the talents that God's given to us? That's family. Amen? I'm not rebuking you. I'm just telling you what family is. See, kingdom is in the giving. And many times, those who are not givers never find the kingdom because it's all about them. But family is covenant. Family is not based on, how many of you know covenant is not based on agreement? Yeah. <laughs> Ask any couple that's married. <laughs> if, you're, if you're married, you understand what this means. Covenant is not based on agreement. I disagree with him, therefore I'm leaving the church. Welcome to a commodity-driven self-satisfaction Western Christianity. 
So you're not receiving what you feel like you should receive. Give. It's family. We're not going to all agree on stuff. If everyone agrees on everything, it means that one person is thinking and the rest are not. Yeah, it's true. It means one person is alive and the rest are brain dead. <laughs> and you know what? And that's what religion has created today. Are Christians who don't know how to think. All they could do is just know how to do things by being told what to do. I was in a nation recently, and there was a successful businessman. And you know what? And how dare this leader, this pastor, out of his own benefit, he told him to sell off his business, to join his church, plant a church. And he said, you know what? Shut down your business here. He was giving them business advice, and you know, it was the worst advice I ever heard. And so I sat down with the person. The person was saying, you know, I'm struggling here. I'm struggling there. So I wanted to find out what the bottleneck was to see if we could open that thing up. And I just said, share me the story that you, uh, you know, tell me your journey on how you got here. And, and, and he told me, and I said, you know what? I'm sorry. Sorry, but I said, all this advice, I said, throw it away. I said, that's not God. And so we read, and I said, and he said, what do you feel? I said, this is what I feel like you're supposed to do. And the Lord spoke to me and started telling me what to tell him. And he started weeping. And he went to his office and pulled out his business plan. And everything that I said to him was in his business plan. Everything. And he just wept, and I repented, and I said, you know what, I'm sorry that a leader would do this to you in the name of Christ, while he's destroying his own family so the church benefits. It's a spirit of religion. I was so angry. And I told him to leave that church and leave that leader with no apology. I said, that's not a leader at all. Just that person's just there for selfish gain. But how many of you know covenant is giving? It's not using people. It's not, you know, that's one of the challenges at Renaissance. People want to be used, so when we don't use them, they get mad. <laughs> you know how many times I got yelled at, literally, because I wouldn't use people? Use me. I don't want to use you. Let's just spend time together. Let's get to know each other. And all these prophetic words came forth. Because you're not using me, God is going to shut down Renaissance. Man, I didn't know you were that powerful. <laughs> I didn't know you were that big. But see, family is where you just be. You don't have to prove yourself. Family is you just come and let your hair down, right? You need to just let your hair down. <laughs> Who cares if you woke up late? Just show up. Well, I woke up 20 minutes late. Good, well, show up 30 minutes late then. <laughs> Don't even brush your teeth. Pop in a mint, just show up, stay away from people, shake hands like this. And if people point out the you know, sleep in your eye, just brush it off. We don't need to prove anything here. That's what family is. You just show up. Is my hair okay? Because yeah. <laughs> I am on camera, you know. <laughs> you know it, this, is what, this is what covenant looks like. And you know, and, I, and, and I, love, I love our family because I feel like we're really growing in that area. You know, we're really growing in what covenant looks like. Are you doing okay? Okay, let me just shoot these to you. Family is covenant. Two, family is where you belong. You belong here. You belong to a household, not an orphanage. Did you hear me? The church, we at Renaissance, we're a household, not an orphanage. And the orphanage I'm talking about is not a place, I'm talking about the mentality. You belong here. Well, I don't feel welcome. Well, make someone else feel welcome. Yeah. That's how you give. Yeah. Okay. You find someone that's new. Maybe you find someone else that may not feel like they belong here. And you go to them and say, you know, welcome to my family. Yeah. Don't expect me or Pastor Jessica to do it. I could barely remember all y'all's names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I saw you before. How long have you been here? Uh, five years. <laughs> Do 
Three, family keeps one another accountable. Say accountable. accountable. This is what I fear the most when people come and say, will you keep me accountable? <laughs> because I could tell you this within three months, they're no longer around. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's, I actually plotted that timeline from looking at different people's lives of when people ask me to be accountable versus within, <laughs> give them 90 days. If they could pass my 90 days of accountability, they're here for life. It's true. It's true. Accountability. Say accountability. How many of you love accountability? It's an account for your ability. It's not just keeping you out of sin. It's about keeping you in your destiny. That's what accountability is about. Man, that was good. I write that down. See, as a family, we're to keep one another accountable. And when we forget about the vision, we say, remember the vision God spoke to you. Remember what God spoke to you. I'm going to give up. I'm going to throw in the No, my wife, you know how many times my wife had to remind me of vision? I'm done. I, I, you know, I've been through very dark times. You don't even know. Let me just tell you the darkness I've been through a little bit. I, I remember before God, I took my Bible, ripped it in half, and I said, I'm done with you. It's a dark place to be. Listen, I understand being in dark places. I understand the difficulty and the challenge in the walk with Jesus. I, I mean, I look back and go, it's, man, thank God for grace. He didn't strike me dead. I'm glad when I said, I'm done with you. I'm glad he didn't say, well, I'm done with you too. You know, when I said, I'm done with you, he said, I'm just starting with you. <laughs> Great, thanks God. Accountability. It's Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. That's how we grow together. I texted Ray this week, and I said, man, thanks so much. He was reminding me of some stuff and some gaps and just some things that we need to do. And I said, man, thank you. And he said, iron sharpens iron. And we, sh we sharpen one another, amen? And sharpening is not always fun. You know, family fights for one another. It means honoring one another, preferring one another. This is what family looks like. Can we prefer one another above ourselves? Honor. And I'm just going to say it without, it's not a rebuke or casting dispersion, but how many of you know that when we show up on time, we're honoring one another? We're honoring God and we're honoring one another. Now, next week, if you're going to be a little late, don't not show up. I remember last time I said this, and the next week, there were a number of people missing, and I talked to them, and they're like, well, I was going to be a little late, so I just decided not to show up. <laughs> Better late than never. But in that, let's honor. Let's honor God. Right? We're never late for work. At least I hope you're not. At least, at least I hope you're not. <laughs> yeah. How much more for God? We fight for one another. That means giving each other the benefit of the doubt. Have you heard what so-and-so said about so-and-so about so You know what? Uh-uh. I know them, and that, that sounds outside their character behind the scenes go to them hey did you say this you know about so and so said about you okay you know what thank you for letting me know go to the school so hey so, uh, you know someone told me that and you know what and people say who is it I tell them so and so said <laughs> what are you trying to protect because most people say so and so said without so and so ever telling them so there's no even true statement behind that they're just fishing for information so if people, if people don't tell me who they are, I totally dismiss it. Because it means nothing. 
because I don't care what ghosts think about me anyways. But we fight for each other. Amen? Last, family is a place where you grow. This year, the word is maturity. Say maturity. Maturity. It's time to grow. We're going to grow up. Amen? We're going to mature this year. We can't say we're an apostolic church if people don't mature. The whole ascension gifts, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers is for the purpose of maturation. In fact, the the cornerstone of Ephesians 4 isn't even about the ascension gifts. It's about Christ and how we're to live in unity with one another in brotherly love, speaking the truth to one another in love. And then in the middle of that, God says, I gave some as apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. In other words, to snap them into and to align them into ministry for the works of ministry. But there's even something greater that goes on as you read that verse in verse 12 and 13, 14, 15, and 16. It is that until the full stature of Christ, to full mature body, until you come to a mature man, we're going to become mature this year. You know what that means? That means that in a family, we have to be teachable. How many of us are teachable? Listen, Proverbs 15, 12. A scoffer does not love the one who reproves him. He will not go to the wise. In other words, the one who's critical, the one who's unteachable, he doesn't love the person that corrects him because he's not willing to receive wisdom for his own life. I love this one, Proverbs 12, 1. Ready for this? Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. Anyone love discipline? But he who hates reproof is stupid. (laughs) It's the closest translation to the Hebrew, (laughs) N-A-S-B. He who hates reproof is stupid. (laughs) Nothing more, not just stupid. (laughs) See, when we start maturing, we realize we don't know it all. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. The more you know Jesus, the more you realize you don't know Him. And as we're growing together, we realize we're not it. But we have a family that we could lean on. A family that we could grow together as we gather to worship Jesus. Amen. We're here to build a strong family. And we're going to be talking about what does healthy marriage look like? What does it look like to raise godly kids, grandchildren? You know, single parents, you're my heroes. You know, I'm wondering if Timothy was raised by a single mom. You know, just, just saying. I haven't done my deep research. Pastor Ken, I don't know if she was or not. But I know that Timothy didn't have a strong father figure outside of Apostle Paul that we know it. But he mentions his mom and his grandmother. We're going to raise up champions. And we have Pastor Kelly in there with Jessica and the children's workers just raising up champions in our generation. We have Josh and Elena raising up champions with our youth. You know, God's doing it, amen. He's given us the best. We may not have everything, but I'll tell you this, we have the best. You know, and get ready, Porterville. Come on. Not that we're it, but we're it. I know, I know that kind of goes, that bothers some of you when I say that, you know. Oh, that sounds arrogant. Well, no, I just believe in who we are. That's all. I'm not saying we don't need anybody else, but I'm saying we have a puzzle. We're a piece of the pie. It's family. 
Let's all stand together. Family, pray together. Come out to our hop. Listen, Friday nights, we are going after revival. You want more of that revival spirit and culture and stuff like that? Again, Sunday mornings, that's who we are. And we're going to be building together that way, but we're going to be building deeper. But Friday night, we're going to see stuff happen. Building family, connect groups. This is the way we're going to do it. This is the vision God's given to us. He spoke this to us. Not just a good idea. Amen. And so I expect all of us to be in connect groups, if all possible. And we'll be giving more information out about that. It's the northeast side, which is going to be a southwest side. And there may be, there's some changes, you know. Still, um, I haven't talked to anybody, really, whether um, we're going to keep the same location or anything, if people offer. But we'll get all the details out by next week. And, and you guys choose which group you want to give to. If you want to be a part of my group, which is the best group, then uh, you know, just be a part. I'm just, my wife's like, what? You know, the group that you go to should be your best group. Yeah. Should be your favorite. Yeah. yeah. And so, why don't we do this? You know, as we end... Just get, in, uh, just get in a group of threes or fours and just bless one another right now as a family. And if there's any need, just pray for one another. If you have a word, just release a prophetic word over one another.
I pray a blessing over you and your household. I bless everyone who's watching online, those of you who are not feeling well, who are being attacked in your body. We declare healing in the name of Jesus. We declare health and wholeness in Jesus' name. We pray for a new strength to walk out this year. Lord, give us ears to hear. Lord, that we would have true vision. So Lord, bless everyone here, God. Lord, we thank you for the year of alignment. We thank you for the year of maturity. We thank you for the year of miracles and provision, God. We thank you, Lord, in advance for what is already established in heaven that's going to come forth in our lives this year. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you that the grace of God would flow in and through your life that the Lord would lift up his countenance on you and give you peace, shalom, in your mind, in your body, your spirit, your emotions. I bless you in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. I love you. God bless you, and we will see you sometime this week, at the least next Sunday. God bless.